Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Welcome into the next edition of the Hockey Talkers. We're here in the NHL Extravaganza shows. We're going to talk about the playoffs thus far, about Pirlo's team that I also very much like a lot of guys on the team, painstakingly playing terrible against the Avalanche. Um, and then the Tampa Bay Lightning coming back and tying up that series, which is something that I will give all the props to our Hartford Whalers hat-wearing uh, friend here. In Pirlo Wisdom for being right and me being dead wrong, so congratulations, Pirlo. <laughs> um, and uh, for two guys that used to do capping stuff together, Pirlo got me on that one. <clears throat> so did he got my wallet, too, but that's a different story for a different time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, moving on, how are you guys doing today? Doing good, man. Doing good, awesome. man. Perlo, it's great to see you. I love the hat, man. Love the hat, dude. That I mean, you got to go down with the Hartford Whalers hat, man. You know what I'm saying, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, I'm, I was a Hartford fan. I'm still a Carolina fan. And oh, yeah. yeah. Most okay, definitely. that makes sense now, why you pay attention to the kid. Okay, that. that <laughs> He's, no, we we I, don't call him the professor for nothing. <laughs> I stuck with them over to Carolina, and then when they got their new ownership, I really yeah. loved Don. I loved Don, and I, I liked their whole everything. I like everything. And then they got Brenda Moore, and I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, right. No win -win. Out of you. Yeah, you know, that was win win all the way. Yeah. So you know. Well, speaking of on that segue, speaking of good coaching, when it comes to your guys, um, opinion on the Colorado series against Edmonton was it out coaching was it just crappy defense was for the on the Oilers side for the most part was it Mike Smith as a 40 year old goaltender that should not be starting in the postseason since uh you're the fan of the team uh Pirlo as well as one of our analysts for the team what's your take I'll go to you first <clears throat> well first of all I was surprised as heck they beat Calgary I don't know what Calgary is doing yeah. All they had to do, all Calgary had to do was dump and chase against the Oilers and they beat them. And uh, Sutter was just being stubborn as heck. They were playing that possession at the blue line type game, which is a cool way to play. I don't know what's wrong with it, but not against the Oilers. You know, why would you put, put yourself in a position where their forwards are able to do most of the defensive work when they have terrible defense? So, uh, I wasn't surprised. I thought it was going to go six to start out with um, because because Edmonton surprised me against Calgary. I gave them two games. But after I saw the first game and you see dry settle, if you want to call it skating out there. Like, yeah. Like, my gosh. Uh, he was on one leg for sure. I will give Leon dry settle. The fact that he produced, what was it, 32 points? In the postseason, where twenty-eight of them were probably with one leg, yeah. that's uh, when you know you're a legend in the league and deserve more recognition. Like I think Kopitar, not to get sidetracked too much, but deserve recognition for the Selkie. But I don't think he deserved more than Drysaddle. I was actually opposed to the Selkie voting. Well, I don't think Lindholm even comes close. But that's another thing altogether. No, I don't yeah, think he right. does either. But that's, but, another, uh, that's another. But that's another smorgasbord. That's board another game. thing. Anyway, we'll be here for seven hours anyways, debating this. I don't thing. think. I think Smith <clears throat> kept. I think Smith kept. Like he is getting way too much crap. But Smith kept him in the games more than anything. The defense was absolutely diabolical. It was all year. It's a Who bloody miracle. That, it's, a, it's a miracle. It's not a miracle. They just have an incredible top six and they got away with it all the way through. They're never going to win a cup with that with Keith and Barry. And no no team is winning a cup yeah. with Keith and oh, Barry in their top six. Period. No, in the top six, yeah, but Barry's not even your top. If I'm looking at your roster from performance base, Barry's not your top righty defenseman of all people, and I never thought I would say this about a roster in my entire life. The top Man. defensive right-handed defenseman is Cody Cece. Yeah, and yeah, he I'll he ha he, ha he hasn't been all that bad. No, he's but, been good. He's actually revived his career, and actually, I thought looked his best with Woodcroft. So as long as they keep Woodcroft and keep moving in that direction, I think that'll be fine for Cece. It's just he's not a one. He's still yeah. never going to be a. Guy that should be playing 22 minutes or more a yeah. game, where Donkey Keith should be playing about two minutes a game at this point. Yeah, right. And so, plays 28. 
So, but, and Bouchard's amazing offensively, but not amazing defensively yet. That's what he's he's, he's, a, he's a kid. He'll be all right. No. So, yeah, so no, no, no. what did you think fine. about what was the what was your take then on on the whole? I mean, we touched on it, and you guys said it about Drysaddle being injured and everything. So, what do you think about the coaching? I mean, if it wouldn't have been for Woodcroft coming in after you know Tippett got fired, they probably would have never have made the playoffs to begin with. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, right? I don't. I don't really blame. Honestly, I don't blame Tippett for what he was doing because okay. you're you're not going to win playing the system in the playoffs. Playing the system that Woodcroft was putting in. I, I I understand both sides. Woodcroft is doing what you using what he has, and that's the way you got to play, win with what he has. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is was what what they have. You, know, you can't win that way, regardless of what you have. See, so tip it's like you can We're not going to do that because we're not going to win a cup. And I'm here to win a cup. So he was really forcing the hand of Holland and everybody else in his own way to say, do something about this defense, or you're going nowhere. So I don't really blame Tippett. I know he got really, he got slammed for what he was doing, and I get it because everybody wants to make the playoffs. But honestly, I get what Woodcroft did because he's young. He wants to keep his job, right? <clears throat> Tippett's old, man. He's like, you want to fire me? Fire me. I don't care. He made time. Yeah, he's money, been right? there, done that once. He wants, he wants to win a cup. And the only way you're going to win a cup with that team is if – I believe that if they didn't fire him, he would have left anyways. Yeah. At the I, end of the season maybe, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, all right. I so do think – uh, oh, go ahead, Steele. Here's my thing on this whole on this whole Edmonton thing, right? Because I too was very much taken aback by how they played against Calgary. Because I was just blown away at like, what are you guys doing? I mean, you're not playing what brought you here. You're not uh-huh. playing the way you're not playing the way that you should have played. That that you played during the regular season that got you to this point, and then you suddenly changed, and and now you're not playing that way anymore. You know what I, I mean? I don't know. I think they were, but they shouldn't have been. They should have been dumping and chasing. They were playing. That's what I mean. They, they, but they didn't play dump and chase in the regular. No, season. they didn't. They he played was possession. Stubborn. Yes. All they had to do was dump and chase against the Oilers, and they would have absolutely destroyed them. Now here's my question, though. Here's my thing. Yeah. No. No. One hundred percent. I. I, I, the, the, the I agree with that. No, play. I agree with that. The here's the whole thing. Not play their style in that series. Here's the whole thing, though. Okay, and. You guys touched on at the very beginning. Drysaddle was on one leg, and played great. You're still probably the right. Best. Like to this point, where the postseason ended, now McDavid's still was the best performer in the postseason. Yeah, okay, yeah. but he still and played still on one leg. Yeah, that. he played on one leg. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now you would think that a smart coach would say instead of playing him 25 minutes a game, you would play him like. 12. That's probably him, though. If I'm playing on one leg and I'm trying to win, I'm literally – then it's a rookie coach, too, and I'm one of the best players. He doesn't have the decision-making authority. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. But, that's a good point, but I still think he overplayed him in Oh, no, I understand that. I agree, but, like, I feel like – he didn't like, need to be in. Like, coming uh, from personal experience of playing through injuries, I would tell my coach, if you take me out, I'm quitting the team. Like I would perform, a, I would do like a Phil Kessel level. Yeah, but I'm not that kind of guy, man. I'm it, no, I, had, I really understand. Think they need I me honestly, out. I'm going to be I out. Honestly, I honestly don't think that's the reason. It had nothing to do with whether Dry Settle was told to go in or forcing them to go. That's in. what I mean. I don't think that was the case. I, I okay. was, because if you look at, and that was the second part of the Edmonton Oilers' problem going into the playoffs, and still is now. Dry settles better than anybody in their bottom six on one leg. And that's on the one problem. leg. And that's the problem. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is it, <laughs> even even if he's tired and in pain, he's better than yeah. Derek Ryan, yeah. uh Fogel, oh, Ashton, yeah, all day long. That always like, reminds that, me. That's the problem. That and Colorado be- had better players on two legs than dry settle on one. And they're bottom five, six. Yeah. So, you know, like if, if he was at Colorado, uh, 
uh, Bednar probably would have played him like twelve minutes, like because they. That's they what I mean. Because they're fine. Because their third and fourth lines are so strong, they can do that. But Edmonton, they can't. Doesn't play. have that. They don't yeah. have that depth. That was really the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you also talked about the goaltender and Smith, and I also have to agree with you on well, that Steve, as well. Too. One thing though, before we go on that, the one thing when it comes to injuries, I kind of compare it to because I always played through them. I never let my. I had a high ankle sprain, finished the game, went to the doctor. He's like, yes, you didn't play the rest of the game, didn't you? And I laughed at him. <laughs> well, I <laughs> so, get it. Uh, like, so, like, I've always had, like, that Trust hockey. Me, man. I've so, like, mentality too. where, um, so, like, uh, and then I wasn't supposed to play the whole rest of the season, and I laughed at him again, and just, since I'm ambidextrous, kicked left-footed instead of right-footed until my right foot was able to kick a ball more than two feet. Uh, so. Okay, uh, but. So, like, there's ways, I think. I'm not saying they, that there's not ways. Yeah, I'm like, not I saying that that, that if you're that competitive as an excuse. Yeah no, yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, I know I couldn't play 12 minutes. Like, if I'm in, I'm all in. I don't care if I'm playing or 20. Well, I get it. I get it. But, see, but I like, really if I'm think. I'm all in, I'm all in. Like, but I really think that that was part of the issue, and I, I really think they should have limited him a little bit more. So that he would have been a little bit more rested, and instead of taking those draws in the defensive zone, he should have been taking him in the offensive zone. Yeah, although I don't think Dre ever showed lapses for me. It's just he was slow. Like I thought oh. he looked good the entire series. It's just he was slow. Like oh, the, I don't the, know, he was super slow. Like oh, I mean, was, I, there was many but, times I saw but, him doubled over in pain before he even but, got but onto fine. the bench. Like we might end up seeing this dude in a freaking tour meniscus. Like you don't know. Like I think it's more or, or worse the. ACL joint, but like the, the like it's. I think though, once you're in that setting and you're the Oilers and you've really been trying to get that deep in for a while, I don't care if I have a torn ACL. If I can get hot, like that's the situation where I'm normally trying to play. I'm like, give me all the pain meds in the damn world. Well, I'm playing in this damn game. I, I realize that, but I don't care if I'm a coach. If I got if, if, back if he has play in this damn game, like that's. In, if like, he's in Colorado, he's only playing 13 minutes a night, period. I don't care how much he doesn't like it. I don't care whatever. Exactly. That's no, it. No, I agree, but that's the, but I'm saying Edmonton's not like that. If you have a rookie head coach and you're one of the best players, the no. head coach doesn't it has, have the authority. It has nothing to do with the fact that you have a rookie head coach. It has to do with your third and fourth lines are shit. Sorry. To well, say that too. No, I, I, no, I, no, that's the truth. No, that's no they are. No, they that's are. Why. No, they are. No, they are. That's but, but, but the other side is... If I'm a rookie head coach and Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisler say you're not taking me out of the damn game, I'm not taking them out of the game. I don't think so. I don't think so. That's, well, regardless I, I, of that fact, okay, regardless of that fact, Edmonton's playing golf now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but that's not because also it's not because of Leon Dreisler or Connor McDavid or, right. for that matter, Zach Hyman, who did okay in moments, and then especially not because of Evander Kane, who did good. Zach Hyman was the best guy on the ice. On the yeah. So, so like, now, what do you Kane, think? Hyman, I'm interested – I'm interested in what you guys think here of of the fact now that Colorado is going to be sitting now at least at the very least five days yeah. at the very least. Mm -hmm. What Because right? game you six is the too. 11th. Yeah, yeah, but you broke up on my end when you said is. Oh, okay, I heard I'm sorry. Five they're, they're, okay, they're going to be sitting for there's five, five, for five days. days. Five or yeah, six at days. The okay, least. okay, okay. Okay. And the game six is the 11th, which means that if it goes to game seven, which we all know it's gonna, that means the it's Rangers. the 13th, right? So yeah. then there's going to be two days later, which means that the playoffs are going to start on the 15th. You mean the cup? Or the cup. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the finals, right? Yeah. So now that's over a week. Now. Might be tough on the first game, but. I still think Colorado will be fine. I okay. still have the right. I just hope it gets Kemper back for Colorado. State. That's what I'm thinking too. Right. Oh, it's definitely going to because he was. They're, they're, they're not beating. They're not beating either team with Prince House and that. But, no, I, I agree with that, but I also think he's going to be back because he was already the backup to Francois for the last game. So, yeah. like, unless if something, ha yeah, he was. He was like, if you watch the celebration again, okay, or she's yeah, the guy jumping protocol. Like, uh, well, he wasn't. Well, if he is, he told he told protocol to buzz off because he was on the ice jumping up and down with his teammates. Well, I mean, you're not. If you're in so, protocol, you're not a backup goaltender. You're not even suiting up. 
Yeah. Okay, well then, yeah, then he obviously wasn't improved. <laughs> that or he told the NHL, basically, fight me. Well, and you can't do that. Anything. You can't do that. <laughs> Not anymore. You you can't do that anymore now because they, they got guys that will take you out now. Nope, you can't do that no more. Well, basically, you saw the same thing, like the question you're asking. You saw the they, same thing. You I, saw the same thing with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay sat. They didn't look good their first game against. No, them. they didn't. And then the second game, they got their legs going a little bit against the Rangers. I'm, I don't agree with you. I don't think this is going seven. I don't think Tampa's losing another game. Okay. See, I'm still the opposite. I haven't got convinced just because like Tampa to me has only had one good game in the entire series. So that still puts us at the at the at the very latest the 13th for the start of the cup. Yeah, yeah. So that's still that's still six days. Right. So it'll be tougher than the first game, but I I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal overall. Overall, for the whole series, they they'll I probably won't, I, I, would, the I, I probably is, wouldn't take them to win the first game regardless of who they play. I Even if the, they are going to be in Colorado, mm, yeah, Colorado would make it a little more likely. But uh, it is tough. To, I don't know what it is, but for you know what, a lot of guys it doesn't bother them a bit. But usually half the team they they just can't get. No matter how hard they try, they can't get their head. There for that first game after five, six. Games. Yeah, it's tough because you're not. I don't know out. why it doesn't look at Tampa Bay's been through this how many times, and half their team wasn't there that game. It just it doesn't matter. So yeah, probably they lose the first game. Probably. It's tough though because like whenever I have sat out a couple weeks in sports, even just like growing up in high school levels, travel levels, whatever, it's tough to get back into that mentality. Yeah, like, they're, you're, they're all at home. They're all at home. You're with your kids. You're out doing. These guys have millions of dollars too, right? So they're yeah, so they're doing whatever the hell they want. Yeah, their so. wives want to go. They might have went to Europe and come back for all you know. Like, they, they, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I don't yeah, think that's going to be the case. But <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. You like the guys like that are from political, like the freaking Geneva yeah. But I mean, you know, I I, I, I don't Geneva. think. At the freaking stadium. Yeah, I, I don't think they're like, going to. Oh, where was you at? Oh, we just on Geneva's beaches after speaking at the convention. It's like. But we only were off for 48 hours. Who yeah, I know. Right. Who was it for the <laughs> Islanders? The Islanders head coach, uh, Al Arbor. Yeah. When they won the five cups, I don't know if you could still do this to this day, but you weren't allowed to go home. You, It didn't matter how long you were waiting. Everybody stayed in a hotel with whatever city they were going to play next, and they hung out together, and that was it. You weren't allowed to go home. I don't think you can get away with sure that today. You could do but, it. I'm sure you could. Oh, you mean like back in the day when they had the cup finals? When they right? went five in a row, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's just something about not everybody did that, but he did. It's something that once you get it's like when you're on a long road trip and you come home and all the guys go to their families and they got family issues or just just not even issues, but you meet you know, you know regular you everyday life. life. It's complete different energy, and now you got to come back. So you imagine for five or six days, you have that completely different energy, and everybody gets back together again, and then you got to get it going, and it's it's tough. Right? No, I'm with so, you. I'm with you. So you, I, I'm assuming Perlo then that you think that Tampa Bay is going to be playing against Colorado. Yeah. That's what I that's what I picked this year for it just so happens. After last year. Oh, that's year who you so picked. I picked Colorado to win the cup before the season started. I picked Tampa, Colorado before the playoffs started. So I picked Colorado to win the cup before the season started. I picked oh, him in cool. my bracket. Right? Picked him in my bracket. And then mm-hmm. that was the only thing that I got right. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember any of that. Uh, like the beginning of the season, I would have to go back and watch our video because I've done way too much since then to remember what the heck I said about. No, I, I, I definitely felt that Colorado was going to be, and and then a lot. We talked about them for a while. You know, I watched a lot of Florida games this year, and I really felt that Florida. This was even before Giroux got traded to them. You know what I mean? And watching a lot of the Florida games and a lot of the Carolina games. And, man, I just really felt that Florida and Carolina had made that next step. Do you know what I mean? And really felt that they were going to be able to 
to go into the playoffs this year and make more of a headway. And that just was yeah, not the case. I, no, I didn't see it for Florida. I didn't see it for Florida. And then when uh, I just didn't see them play playoff. Well, hockey Florida, you're playoff. going to see it when Spencer Knight's their starter. It's good. It's the same thing with Dallas. That'll Dallas. help. That'll help. Yeah, when yeah. Jake Ottinger came in and took. But the they got to learn how to play. They got to learn how to play shutdown hockey. Oh well, yeah, I didn't, yeah, they played. I didn't see them do that all year. Carolina, I liked until Anderson went down, and I was like, no, that was pretty know. much the end of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That really was a shame too. You know that that see that's the sad part about this whole, like. Even when you look at the first game of the series between um, Colorado and and Edmonton, I mean that first game, the starting Eight, goaltenders six, yeah. were done before even the second period. Right? Yeah. They chased Mike Smith out because they he let in six goals, and then Kemper goes down hurt. Oh, and that was the other. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was the other thing about Calgary. Sorry to jump on you there, but Markstrom had a horrible fucking season. Yeah, he did. He played so good in the regular season. So, do you think he wins a Vesna? Jacob Markstrom. Um, Markstrom. No, I don't, think, I don't think he's in for it, is he? Is he? I thought he was. Markstrom Vezina? Was Vezina? Yeah, was he one of the total? Let me look. It hasn't been announced yet, but I thought he was... No, 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 the final is... Uh, Shesterkin. I think more. I'll... I got Shesterkin on the brain. It could be Markstrom. Well, Shesterkin's going to win. It doesn't make a difference. Hey, it's Shesterkin, have... Markstrom, and Soros. That's what They're I right. mean. Soros, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, um, I no, think, I think gonna Shesterkin's going to win the... Uh, yeah, I, I think don't Shesterkin's think Shesterkin's going to win MVP. Chance to win the... I think Shesterkin... Oh, I wish he would, but... He, I, I don't, don't know about the... Yeah, I don't think he'll win the horn. Matthews is going to get MVP. Shesterkin's going to win the Vez now. And uh, but I think he should. I think Shesterkin should get the heart too. Like there's no way the, That's what I mean, the Rangers yeah. barely make the playoffs, especially first half. If it wasn't yeah. for Shesterkin. Oh, I agree with you guys. I mean, I don't yeah, he wasn't probably the biggest goalie nerd. So like, I would give it to him if I had the vote. I would be giving it to him all day. <laughs> but like, I don't see a goalie getting. It takes an arm and a leg and then some to win no. the heart as a goaltender. No. It's like when Verlander won the Triple Crown in pitching, everyone was like, holy shit. It was the last one. So, like, 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 that just doesn't... The last one that won. Was it Hasek, Hasek? I think? Yeah, wasn't it Hasek? Hasek. Wasn't it the Dominator? I think so. Yeah. 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 Hasek. Yeah. So that just Either that or... I think Theodore might have did it after he knew it was a weird thing, but I can't remember, but... Oh, no. Uh, Boy, there's a name blast from the I past. Think, Jose Theodore. Right. Oh, my I gosh. I think you're right, Pirlo. I think Theodore might have won it after him. Yeah, I, know I, think, that was, I think that was like yeah. 0102 or 02. Like, that was early 2000s. Yeah, I had a freakish season. There. I think, yeah. It was early. Yep. Two, I would have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure it was early 2000s for. Uh, All right, so now let's say this. Let's say this, right? So let's say hypothetical situation. It's New York and or um, uh, Tampa Bay and Colorado in the cup. Per uh, uh, Joe, who do you think would um, do? You, do you think it's going to be New York or do you think it's going to be Tampa Bay? I still think New York should win. Granted, I'm also biased because I don't feel like having to drive to damn Tampa Bay. Okay, I get it. No, no I get but, it. So, okay, so but uh, if, if it's New York, if it's New York and Colorado, who are you taking? New York. I'm still sticking with my gut. I'm not going away from my gut yet until I have a reason to. So you you have New York going all the way. I have New York going all the way in two different sports, which pains me. The other day, I said the Mets are winning the World Series, which I still think is going to happen. Uh, uh, all right. And then. Uh, I believe the Rangers are going to win the Stanley Cup mainly because of Igor Shosturkin and that kid line becoming the elite players we all expected them to become. Okay, all right. Like but... Kapokaka might not have a lot of points, but watch Kapokaka, which Russ even said it too, and agree with me. He's a possession hound. He doesn't yeah, have to produce made... points. He's a possession he, he... hound for Laffy and Heidel. Yeah. Who gives he's, a like shit Pula... he's, he's like he's like Pulo Pulo Harvey for Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, players. exactly. Uh, people are crapping on him. It's like you don't. Like you don't, you really don't watch the game. Me watch. You, watch, dude, you, watch. Don't 
Well, you don't <laughs> understand what Kako does for the New York Rangers. I'm sorry. You, all you want to do is just see a guy hit somebody. That's that's no, but yeah, watch that's Payton. exactly watching exactly. Payton, watching Peyton's videos when Paul Yarby does something. There's like ah. fuck you. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 just starts going in. Oh my gosh, Peyton going on. Like, you know? Like, it literally just goes in on people for hating yesterday. Look, look, I do the same thing, though. I started going in on people about hating Oscar. I'm like, the dude had cancer, you morons. Yeah. And they're, I mean, like, you know. and they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, 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 but it took him two years to get back from it. And the one guy said other athletes haven't came back from cancer. And I didn't feel like listening to the examples because then that would have really been a dick move. But I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? There's multiple examples of just baseball and hockey that yeah that, guys coming back from cancer yeah like, yeah, like yeah. that's actually not uncommon at all because cancer is one of the more common diseases unfortunately that you're just bound statistically with how many people have played at the course of history in the nhl and for that matter the ahl and for that matter the khl and in, in the example of mirachenko that that are gonna have to go through cancer almost and, the same type of cancer i believe well uh, as oscar yeah, that was the same exact was Hoskins lymphoma, Mirochenko. Yeah, yeah. So lymphoma, actually, that's so why I think James Connor, James Connor, the guy that played at Pittsburgh University, was drafted by the Steelers a few years ago. Had the same thing. Yeah, he had cancer. Chad Bettis in baseball had to just go. So that's what I mean. That's you know, Mario Yeah, Mario Lemieux was down for. He missed almost two years. Uh, I mean, missed James and two Tyo, years now was very good with the Pirates at the start of his career and is now really good again. I didn't really pay attention to his stats this year, but was really good since. Uh, it had cancer also. Like, I think, and I speak from, like, I haven't had it yet, fortunately, but I'm bound to get it because it runs in our family at, like, a 90 percentile. So, like, we have a ridiculous rate of people getting cancer in our family. But, like, the... Um, the, so I don't, but I don't worry about it or dwell on it. And I see how all these guys get through it. So like, I have so much of a support system that if it did happen, I know I would be able to get through. Well, it. Let me tell you something, man. Okay, for real. Let me tell you something. Okay, cancer sucks. Did you have it? No, nah, man. Mm -hmm. But my mom died of it. My grandmother died mm -hmm. of it. She my grand my cancer. grandmother was basically my second mother. Like that was yeah. one of the like my other grandmother because my mom's mom. Not to get too sidetracked on this, but my mom's mom will give yeah. you some insight on life because people like this in podcasts too. My mom's mom was uh, really old. Like she was like Betty White age by the time I was like seven. So like I okay. didn't really have that same relationship with her because she had dementia by the time I was three. So I was never really able to have. But my other grandmother, she was sharp to the end of eighty six. So well, well we at least still, you'll have your at least you'll have your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we would still. Uh, have you're a, you're talking Colorado Rangers if that's what happens. Colorado Rangers. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you're talking okay. about. That's what happens. If that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. Before we got tied. I um. <laughs> I think I think I think Vasilevsky in like okay Colorado Rangers. Uh, as long as Kemper's in Colorado, wins that all day. They're five on five will win in five five games. Five. I think that's okay. going seven, no matter what. That's what I have. Before. And what do you think if it's going to be Tampa Bay? Uh, I've been back and forth on that. Um, if they got point back, maybe I still say Colorado. But so I understand um, the point is day to day still. What scares me again right now? What we saw last game. Vasilevsky's back. And I don't care what Shesterkin is. If Vasilevsky's back, New York Rangers aren't winning another game in that series. Then when they play against, if they play against Colorado, that's what scares so, me more than anything, is that Vasilevsky's going to be lights yeah. out against them. If Tampa Bay can trap Colorado, I don't think they, I don't think anyone can trap Colorado. Yeah, I don't think they can. And that's the thing is I don't think – and what, I, what gets me excited about that is that if Colorado wins that series against Tampa Bay and beats that trap, we're going to see finally – because it's a copycat league, right? That's the direction we're going to go. And if we're going to go oh, that direction, I am so excited for this league. 
I don't want Tampa Bay to win. I want Colorado to win. I don't want Tampa Bay to win either. That's why I but picked I them. want Colorado to win, not because I don't care about Tampa Bay winning three in a row. I don't want Tampa Bay to win because I want the style that Colorado plays to win. That's what I want. That and, actually, uh, but I also like the. That's why I picked the Rangers though, because I also like the way Gallant and always have since he's been in Vegas play as well. Where yeah. yes, he does focus a little bit more offensively probably than defensively, but he knows how to make the. He kind of like Kirk McDonald with the ECHL. He knows how to make the defense lead to the offense. Yeah, but you know what though? Oh, you well, know I what though? When you that. have when you have a shutdown goaltender. You can take those. You wins. also have by far the guy that's best at open ice hit. No, no, no. I, but but that's what I'm saying though. When you have that kind of a team and you have that kind of goaltender back there, you can let your defensive and uh-huh. you know you can yeah. take more of those risks offensively because you know that okay, you might you might miss a play well, here or there, but I you got a goaltender back there that's going to stop I the don't clock. Think it's just but, and Colorado actually, but Colorado can do both. They got the best. They might have the best two-way forwards on the team I've seen ever. And up front, top top four, the best two-way forwards maybe I have seen ever. ever. Uh, that's where the Rangers – the Rangers now, give them another – maybe even next year or two years, that's a dynasty on your hands right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think. For so. sure, no doubt about it. I just don't think they're quite ready. Their five-on-five on five isn't quite ready yet. But you got a dynasty on your hands there. You'll see Colorado and the Rangers in the finals next year, probably something like that. Or something like uh, that, yeah. Okay. I mean, wow. Okay. I, the Rangers are going to be – here's I, a prediction. Okay. And I, and I don't make bold this type of prediction as much because I don't like going for hot takes, but I don't think there's a hot take. The Rangers, to me, are going to be in the Stanley Cup three of the next five years. Yeah, I agree. I would even agree with that. Uh, yeah, I would have to agree with that. And I, I you know what else though, Joe? I'll tell you what else. I think that Colorado is also oh, 100%. Gonna be, it's going to be like Golden State and uh, Cleveland. Yeah. And, yeah, because now they've gotten over the hump. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Colorado yeah. now has gotten over the hump. Now finally. Right, and are in the cup finals oh, now Ra- since yeah, 2001. If the, Ra- if the Rangers make it this year, because this is their hardest year, I do agree purely with that, because they have to get past Vazzy if he's back to being Vazzy. But the right. is the closest thing on the planet to Vazileski. So, I'm, go, I'm going with Perlo on this one, Joe. I I, I think Tampa Bay is going to win out. Okay, yeah, I don't see that. If, if they win, I wouldn't be surprised. Winning out, I would be surprised. Because I would much rather see Brian Elliott's name on the cup than Justin Braun's name on the cup. Tampa Bay might Tampa Bay might take it easy tomorrow, the next game a little bit because they know that the difficulty of winning at home against the Rangers. If they if they don't score the first goal tomorrow or tonight, tonight tomorrow, 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 first goal tomorrow, then I say the Rangers win. Because once, once they don't score the first goal, they're going to basically say, okay. Yeah, they're not gotta, good at, at chasing. We got to save ourselves for home here. We're going to – we'll do the best we can. We'll shoot, play from the outside. Don't get hurt. We'll take him at home. That's what Tampa Bay does. They're brilliant that way. Cooper is an amazing coach that way. I don't think I've ever seen a coach that basically tells our players, you know, we don't need to worry too much here. Take it easy. We, we yeah, have a better see, that's chance. That's why I think this is going to go to seven. But it's it depends on if Tampa. I like first coaches goal. though that would like that. Like that, the people that can be hardcore, like we've seen John Cooper be at times when you see him on the bench, but also m- mellow when you want that. Like those are my favorite coaches. Whether it was hockey, basketball, football, I didn't play football. That hockey, yeah, basketball, I mean, baseball, they're, like they're whatever sport. To win, they're playing to win. They're not playing to lose. They're playing to win. No, 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 no. Nobody's saying they're playing to lose. But I'm no, saying- no. I'm, but that's why I like it. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with oh, you. Okay. That's why I like it because they're playing to win. They're not playing to just, you know, get whatever. You know what I mean? They're still playing well, to win. But is, you played and been taxed like Tampa. Pirlo and I've talked about it on his show. We talked about it on our show. Still, you got to take it easy. Sometimes you play so much hockey in a 26 month span. 
it's one of the most grueling sports other than maybe football. Is that a yeah. football? We, 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 so, it's incredible what they're doing. We right. talked about this. Hold on now. Let me throw something at you guys. We talked about this on the Steel Flyers podcast. Colorado has only played mm-hmm. two extra games. Yeah. That's it. Right? Yeah. They've only played 12 games. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, like, and now they're that's resting. That's a big advantage, yeah. Okay, so I I really think Tampa Bay had a longer road. They had to play those three extra games because it went seven games against Florida, or not not Florida, but uh uh, uh Toronto, right? And then uh, yeah, everybody and, and, when and, and that. New York played a couple extra games too. Because they went six games against Carolina or seven games against Carolina, right? So they New York's played some extra games. Do you, you, you see what I'm saying here? Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. So I uh, I don't care who makes it to the finals with Colorado, whether it's Vasilevsky and 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 Tampa Bay or Shesterkin and the New York Rangers, I don't think anybody's gonna be able to get past Colorado, period. I don't care if what I about was or not. Yeah, I don't right. care. Yeah, I think I think Tampa Bay would have a better shot personally, but I, I think it's probably Colorado too. But I mean, uh, yeah, they have a better I, shot. I agree. I, I want to get into the coaching situation. Yes, let's yeah, do I, that I, now. I know, that's what I was trying to segue us out of about twenty-five minutes ago, and we kept talking about other. Stuff. Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> uh, 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 but um. Do anyway, tell us about the coaching situation. Uh, well, what one do we want to start with? There's about 6,500. Well, uh, you know, the fact that there's how well, many coaches we, available now and how many teams are looking for coaches now? Why don't we just predict who's going to go where and we'll see who agrees with who and why and all that stuff like that. All right. Uh, I don't well, who think do I know who's going to go flyer? where, but who I have do a we couple fit? of ideas. All right, well, let's start with our team. Who do we think is going to be the Flyers head coach, Pirlo, you start? Tortorella. Tortorella, Steele. <sighs> Don't comment on that one. Just say who you Talk think. it. Talk. Um, Cassidy. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. All right. So now, let's let's do this now. Pirlo, why are you picking torts? Well, um, I By think. By the way, I'm you only gonna, get four minutes. Uh, I'll be quick. I think that they. <laughs> I, I'm on the fence. I think it's if it, 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 they're not rebuilding. So I believe that they look at a guy like Torts and see what his track record is with teams that have not been very good on paper. Yeah. And realize that the best guy that's going to get them into the playoffs on a regular basis. Which, let's face it, that's all the brass cares about, is getting in the playoffs and making the fans happy. They don't care if they ever win a cup. I, I'm convinced of that. Pretty much. Now. So, if if yeah, you're looking, if you're looking for a guy that can do that, will do that better than anybody else out there. Besides maybe Barry Trotz. But the thing is, Barry Trotz would never be stupid enough to take that. <laughs> Tortorella is pig-headed enough. To believe that he'll not only get in the playoffs, but he'll actually win a cup with this team. He's wrong, but he th- that's the thing. Is he's the one that's pig headed enough to think that he can do it? And they know he probably can't, but he will get them into the playoffs. That's why I think Tortorella is going to be the guy. The problem they got uh, gonna have is Tortorella is gonna say a lot of crap about them, so they better not have hurt feelings. <laughs> they better have some thick skin, that's for sure. All right, yeah. Joe, why did you pick uh, Cassidy? Because that was I, a name I was not expecting. I think Bruce Cassidy's one of the better. He gets a bad rep for not playing the young kids enough, and I think that's stupid because I don't, I don't know about anybody else. But if I have Trent Frederick or Brad Marsh in a Priest Spurs run, who the hell are you giving more minutes to? Like, 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 That's not if, a tough if, question. If you're giving more minutes to Trent Frederick and what's the other guy's name that's on their team? Any other young guy that's on their team, basically, who cares who the hell it is? That you're making the wrong decision, unless if it's David Pasternak, because 
you have two guys that are going to be in the damn Hall of Fame, so you should not be. So, like, there's certain, like, that would be like with Pittsburgh. And people are like, oh, well, why is Brian Rush not playing 25 more minutes than Sidney Crosby? It's like, because Sidney Crosby's already going to be the second best player to ever face the earth. That could be the biggest reason why Brian Rush is not playing as many minutes as Sidney. Uh, so, like, there's, okay. there's certain things that, uh, I don't look at people like I think that's a lazy argument by the media. The people that say, "Oh, well, he doesn't play the young guys." No shit. The Bruins have all these good Bruins players. I'm not play- all these good Bruins players. All these good veteran players on the Bruins. All these good Bruins players are true too. But the, um, Coyle's been great since going to the Bruins in the keyest moments. Not overall, but when they need him the most, he's been there for them. Um, so like I think they still have a team. Like I, I'm still picking the Bruins. Even if Brad retire, not Brad. If Patrice retires, if they get the right coach, I don't think that team's a lost cause next year. They just have the right culture that I personally do not believe that team's going to miss the play. Especially with expanded playoffs, they're going to be in next year still, in my opinion. And so that you're that's why you're picking Cassidy for the Flyers. Because I don't think he should have been fired. I think that was one of the dumbest fires. That was Sweeney Pirro and I talked about. That was Sweeney trying to save this when he's going to be gone by November anyway. So, like, Don Sweeney's not staying past the next calendar year. I guarantee you that. Because the like, the Bruins, to me, are going to make the playoffs by sucking for the first two months. Getting a new guy in house, having that be the fuel of fire motivation, kind of like the Phillies look right now in baseball, but I'm not getting ahead of myself with that yet. And then having that kind of take them up the heap and just kind of keep going. That's what I see for the Bruins next year. That's why I don't think he should have been fired. But Cassidy, to me, that team was a crapshoot crap hole this year. That shouldn't have even been in the playoffs. You had injuries left and right. You had a goaltender that could barely see some of the time and all this other shit that was going on. Like, that team had no business being in the postseason, and they got 107 points. Like, if you looked on paper, there's no chance that team should have had 107 points. There's absolutely none. They maybe should have had 97 at most, and that's probably okay. the stretch. So, and like— think- and you think that Cassidy is going to be able to come into Philadelphia and? Well, Bruce is going to have the same over falsity, I think, of Torch, but in a different personality style. Like, he's going to come in, like, he's not that same personality style of Torch, but he's still going to come in and be like, oh, I'm going to win a cup with this team. Actually, hell, I'm going to win multiple cups with this team. Which, if that happens, fantastic. But I don't foresee that happening. So, but I would like to have a guy that brings those vibes because that's why with Russ. And this is something I'll wrap up with. And I know Pirlo agrees with Russ. The only reason to find the Flyers, I'd find a way to get rid of capital costs and get Johnny Goudreau is your team's a laughing stock of the NHL right now. You have nobody in your stadium. It's the most depressing stadium. I have no interest going to a game next year. None. I haven't been to a Phillies game this year because their team sucks and it's depressing. So like now if they start getting going, maybe I'll go. The Flyers stadium I only went to when we were tailgate, and I yelled at them after the Toronto game that we lost, you all suck, and then just walked out of the stadium. So, like, I'm like, I'll be the first to tell you you don't suck, but if you suck, I'll be the first to almost get thrown out of the stadium for cursing you out from the nice seats. So, like, there's that. So, like, the Flyers are a laughing stock of the NHL. They're right behind the Arizona Coyotes who are playing in Arizona State. So... Um, that that's how I would rank the worst teams in hockey right now. You have the Coyotes, who are not, who actually might have to go above the Flyers now if they get Tempe approved because that stadium yeah, looks really yeah. good. So I would say that it, with the way that the Coyotes are looking right now, the Coyotes are the actually not as bad as the Flyers because that stadium looks disgusting and it's actually in a mecca center. Like I have friends that go to Arizona and they say Tempe's a blast. Yeah, I've been I've been there. Like, too. Quite a few Tempe, times. Yeah, Tempe is a beautiful spot to put a stadium. There's nightclubs. There's stuff that hockey players I mean, are going to love. A, yeah. It's a nice they, little town. Yeah, so I think they're going to draw, one, more free agents playing in Tempe. And, two, they have that – I think it's the 30-year window that they have to keep them in Arizona. So, like, they, like that's going to really help Arizona hockey. Like, I think All that's right. actually going to work. Because it was right. working in Scottsdale. They went to Glendale for some dumbass reason. And then now they're in an area that it'll probably work again. Like, it was mostly just Gary Bettman's fault. And you guys know how much I actually like Gary Bettman. I'm usually in the minority of defending Gary Bettman, where most friends are like, you're an idiot. Why are you defending Gary Bettman? So, but, what it, this one. but when it comes to this one, yeah, he screwed the pooch. Yeah, they I'll should say. have never been in Glenn. All right. So, okay. Now, 
I, I, I can see where you're coming from, Perlo. Why you would pick Tortorella? Okay. I don't disagree with Torch, though. I wouldn't mind. Um, and I can see team. why you would pick Bruce Cassidy, Joe. And and quite honestly, I would have rather have had Knobloch. That's who I would really like to be he the claps. coach. That's why his team sucked in the second half. Okay, I know. But, I mean, I would still like to see what he could do um, in, in this particular type of situation. Uh, and... I, I like him better than any of the guys out there right now, to be honest with you. The reason why I think it's going to be Rick Tockett is because it it's based off of exactly what you said, Perlo. Comcast doesn't care about anything other than, you know, bringing back homeboys and bringing back the good feelings and, and hey, we're going to make the playoffs. That's why I guarantee you we're getting Goudreau. I will well, that's why – and, and see, I think it's going to be this – whole this this whole resurgence this whole you know rick talk it's coming back to the fold and oh everybody's well, gonna see, have i don't be get open for that everybody's but gonna be hugging and you know the, the the main man's back in philadelphia and he's gonna lead the team to the promised land and blah 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 blah, blah. well talk we do have to remember though has about five total coaching years between he has six, a point six, four, six total, six, six total. eight winning percentage. Yeah, but I don't care about that. That's a flat that stat. That sucks. Yeah, but it's a flat stat. That's like me saying this guy has a point seven batting average, but he faces Justin Verlander every single time he goes to the plate. He had, well, an, opportunity, he he had an opportunity in Tampa Bay to coach some pretty good guys down there, right? Yeah, and, but he, and he threw that away. Five. Okay. Then, and, there is, and Arizona, all he did is play a collapsed defense on the temper. Thank you. Him, thank, you. Him, thank you very no, much. I, and, no, I don't hold them what the, you're saying, but what did you want him to do? Their team no. was a fucking disgrace. Well, I mean, the, I, all I'm saying is right. that I, I don't want to experiment with – it's an experiment with, with Talkett that he can do something different than you haven't seen before. Um, well, honestly, I don't want him to do any of this. And I, I agree. Just, I, I know they're not going to do what they need to do. So if you're not going to do what you need to do and you need to make the playoffs, there's only one guy that's going to get that crew in there, and that's Tortorella, and that's it. Cassidy, what about is not, Cassidy can get him in there, but Cassidy's not going there. He's not that stupid. He's going to have See, options that's all the way Cassidy's See, that's not the going thing, to right there. there. No bloody way. Is he going to look at that organization and go, you're going to bring in Goudreau with this bunch and do this? I you think got nobody that, here. I, I think watched, Cassidy watched your, your uh, Ristolainen in Buffalo for how many years? Do you think he wants to go coach Ristolainen? I don't freaking think so. No way. No, if I'm a coach, I'm like, I'm not going to go try to teach that kid how to play defense. I'm, I'm here to tell you, that's probably why Trotz walked out without me? a deal. Because he looked at that team and was like, yeah, I don't think so, guys. You, you. No, no, I think Trotz actually thinks he could get Risto to play defense. That's the thing. Cassidy wouldn't. Well, okay. <laughs> Here's yeah. the thing, though. Philadelphia is, is offering a blank check. Well, no, Torch is going to think the same thing when it comes to uh, Risto, too. He would think that somehow he can get okay, Risto Okay, I get it. But Jim Montgomery is probably check. It. it is yeah. right now, as we're recording this show, the 8th of June – Right? We've got the draft in one month. Mm -hmm. And they still don't have a coach. Yeah. Well, the problem with not having a coach is this year there was no sense of direction from the top down. The Flyers pissed off the Royals and Phantoms. So you know what they need to do? Here's what they need to do, right? They, they need to back up the, the garbage truck and take the entire front office and flush it all out. And get rid of everybody. Well, you can't do that totally. pre-draft totally. because Brett Flair. If you do that pre-draft, you're screwed. Uh, I, so, I totally agree with you. I don't care if it's pre-draft or not. This whatever. has to go, man. Well, yeah, but, but Look, this Philadelphia just has to come out and say that we're gonna suck, and we're gonna rebuild, and we're well, cleaning house. Oh, I get that, but the no, thing no, is, no, no, Brett no. Flair is done good. Chuck, I man. agree, but. That's what needs to happen in Philadelphia, and unless that happens, and it's the unless same with, that and, happens, and it was the same Philadelphia the is never, never, never gonna win a cup. Never. I don't know no. the, I don't, no, I don't I know the names of the draft and development team that they have there, but they're horrible. 
Oh, no, no. They yeah. weren't even at the games Until for Dan most Spade. of the season this they, year. They weren't. They didn't, the whole draft and development team didn't start coming to Phantoms games until Danny B took over. Right. Like they made and, them and then what's company. Danny B being hired as? The it's special like, assistant to the, the Dwight, general the manager. Dwight, the Dwight Schrute role. The Dwight what Schrute the frick is that? Dwight Schrute. Yeah, yeah the Dwight Schrute. Okay, role, so let's take, a, let's take another team because we'll go on and on with Philly. Dallas. Well, who's going to Dallas? Ooh. I, I, I don't know about Dallas, but I can tell you right now, I think Trotz is going to go to Vegas. Oh, God. Uh, I think try or not try. I think um, Torch is going to Vegas. That he's oh, either going oh, there or Philly. Torch, Torch is going to Vegas. She said Trotz. I don't think Trotz is going. No, no, to no. Vegas. I, but I still think if 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 Tortorella goes to Philly, I think that Barry Trotz goes to Vegas. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I so think you, honestly, Dallas. Might either have. that or or either that or Winnipeg. Winnipeg. I think he's. I think he's going to Winnipeg. That's not available. I think Dallas, though, might have Montgomery come back because what's the incentive not to? He's just, he has his next chance. He was doing good for you beforehand. Yeah, I don't he think he's coming back alcohol. there. It would, be, it would be cool for an organization to do that, but I, I don't think – Yeah, I don't, I don't see that either. There's too many bad things that happen. Yeah. Uh, I think Montgomery – Montgomery uh, who was I just – oh, what, the other one was Montgomery was Winnipeg. That makes sense. Uh, well, honestly, oh, Paul going to Dallas. Speaking of Winnipeg, Paul Maurice is out. I there, think Claude so. Julian is going to Dallas. That's a good. Well, that's a good move. That's a good. I, I like that move in Dallas because they. I think they have a team that would be a good match for. Yeah, that's a good move. I like that. High I like that. High possession guy. One of the best possessions. He's like Sutter. Julian and Sutter are almost the same animal. So and uh, he likes he likes coaching veterans. So, right. Uh, to right. me, that just seems like the perfect match. I don't think he'll get him very far or whatever, but he'll get him as far as you could get that, probably, that team. All right. Okay. So, do we think – what do we think about uh, Paul Maurice? Uh, Detroit. You think I so? Agree. That's that a good guy. move there, too, I that's think. The one, that's the one I have. I have that. I have the coaching stuff written down in my notebook for a video, and that's what I had written down for Paul. Paul Maurice to Detroit? Yeah. Okay. All right. He's great with kids. He's great with the media. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing him actually in Philadelphia. I, I feel like he's too similar to AV, but I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, you you know, that's a really good point, actually. <laughs> I didn't think no, about he's, that. He's right. He's right. He's like, he does have an AV side to him, sort of like an air of arrogance to him that, I don't know, the Philly might want to get away from him a little bit. Yeah. 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 He's sort of like a passive aggressive dude. To me. Exactly. Left, so I love Paul Maurice, but I don't. When think he left, when he left Winnipeg, like basically. people thought, oh, he's no, oh, that was such a man, man, man up thing to do. But in actuality, he was kind of thumbing his nose. Thumb, he was thumbing his nose at the organization in a way. He had won out that he he had he had run out of uh, belief in the organization. I, I think. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree. So and, who and, else we got left now? Well, there's a lot of guys that are, we didn't even like. Like, for example, a star. No, I mean teams that are that need coaches. Uh, but you said like Tortorella, Torts. I think he's proven over and over again. He'll go with who with whoever wants him. That's why I think he's going to go to Philadelphia because I don't think there's a lot of organiza most, organizations yeah. that really want him. But you brought up a good point with Vegas. He would probably go there, even though they like. Most because most coaches don't want to go there now. They just look what they did to Gallant. Did mm -hmm. was it to, was anything DeBoer's fault last year? No, so that's I mean, another. Coach oh, wait a minute, Pete DeBoer is yeah, Pete yeah, that's, DeBoer too. That's a good point. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if the Flyers had him either. See, there's another one. Yeah, but yeah, Pete DeBoer. I don't know. He's that good on. Be, I've always liked Pete DeBoer because he. Is one of the better coaches, I think, in the with a team he can do it with. With Vegas' team this year, he wasn't able to execute this. But he's one of a better neutral zone coaches yeah. that then leads to his offense being spot on because he'll just jam you in the damn neutral zone and you want to just 
quit right, that the game like of hockey. Philadelphia has I, I players agree. more suited for his style of they game. Do. They do. The, the Flyers should have played that system all along. They have a bunch of small guys that yeah. are checkers. That's what I and mean. don't yeah. try to jam anybody in the damn neutral zone. Okay. Why do you think I think I lost 25 years of my life watching this stupid team this year? <laughs> like, I, I literally, you have all these guys that you look at the numbers, you look at the analytics for four checking, they're like up here into Mount Everest and above. And the Flyers are like, oh, we don't want to use four checking as a, a part of our game. Did you literally smoke 17 ounces of weed before coaching this team? Because you probably should use four checking as a part of your game. <laughs> probably. <laughs> or at least. Not- yeah, you don't want to play a one-one-three with Philadelphia. That, yeah, no, 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 that's, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. Um, so, you know, I think we I have do have con- to go soon though because I have a softball game at five thirty. I, I was just going to say, I think we have a consensus on some coaches we think are going to where they think they're going to go, right? And I think we all pretty much have a consensus that, like, I think we all agree on the fact that Colorado is probably going to win the cup. No, 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 I didn't say oh. that. I said the Rangers. Oh, okay, you said the Rangers, and 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 Perla, you said it would be. <clears throat> I think it's likely Colorado. Yeah. Colorado, okay. If they're playing the Rangers, for sure, Colorado. If they're playing Tampa Bay, um, we'll see what Vasilevsky does for the rest of the time here. But okay, uh, uh, and if, I'm still not Kemper. That's the problem with Kemper is he he gets 100%. injured so often. If Kemper goes is not healthy or. I don't think Colorado's beating either one of them. Yeah, I don't either. All the right. That's, that's, a backup. that's like, a problem. Russ and I okay. talked about that's that, too, awesome. the show that I have coming out later today. Check it out. It was with the great Russ Cohen of Sportsology and stuff. Um, cool. Kemper's a very yeah, good Yeah, he needs goalie. to be out there. Francois is an average goalie that's not even a 1B. He's a great backup. He's probably maybe the best pure backup that's like a guy that you just have played 20 to 25 games a season but he's not you don't want him much above that threshold right where right, he's right. that pure old school backup nowadays you have a, like for example the flyers next year are going to have a 1a 1b because no matter if it's field with, Sanchez, with or, ivan or, yeah yeah or ivan both of them are ready to be a 1b in my opinion yeah, so yeah. i'm with ivan you on that all day long goals, russia and Sanchez should have been up last freaking season when he was dominating the ahl and we had Brian Elliott sucking is the backup to Randall. But anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, the the point I was uh, making is that he's more of a straight line backup. So I agree with Pirlo. If he's in, that's a big reason why also I'm taking the Rangers because I have a lot of confidence in the Rangers. But I also think Darcy's playing injured. And Darcy playing through injuries before I have a thing. Pirlo knows how much I love Kemper. I have a picture. I no, I know. Yeah, no, no, I know. From, uh, I don't like it. I've seen him play through injuries in the past, and it's night and day. It doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. like he's yeah. night and okay. day. Like he's right. a Vezina Trophy winner to the 20th best goalie in the NHL. Like, it's a night and day difference. I got you. Temperature. All right. I do, I do agree with that. Yeah, I'm with you. By the okay, way, I just to toot my own horn a little bit. Uh, Con- Conabala for the Edmonton Oilers. I had this staples, and everybody was saying that their next number one – Staples is one of the big guys. Oh, the goalie. But I said he, he'll he'll play one year in the age, he'll be back in the K. Uh, he just got sent back to the K. <laughs> he might come back over, but he's not going to be See, anything special. That's why you're special. the prognosticator, my yeah, man. He's nothing, you know what I'm saying? He's nothing he's special. Nothing special. Yeah. He yeah, might I'm be like sure. a good, like, Dustin Tokarski, like, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Anyways, okay. We're All wrong. right, boys. I say we got a good one in the can. What do you say we wrap it up and let everybody know where we can where we can find Perlo and got to go check out the Perlo Wisdom Show, man, for sure. All the frolic. So why don't you yeah. tell folks we can find you? Uh, you can find me at uh, Perlo's NHL POW on Twitter. I got the Perlo Wisdom Show, which I'm not doing quite so much anymore. You'll see me more. Uh, look, get uh, Peyton on the radio on YouTube. Uh, I do, uh, we do uh, show together around the analysis. He does a play-by-play. Basically, I just sit there and laugh with Peyton every once in a while. I say some hockey stuff. Hmm. <laughs> no, uh, man, I like good. watching you guys' games, good. man. You guys did You guys did the, the Edmonton games really well, man. I really enjoyed watching them. He's a lot of fun. So yep. yeah, head, head over to that. Uh, every once in a while, I'm on with Off the Wall Hockey. 
And uh, yeah, so, and I, oh, I just said, I'm doing a whole lot of trade videos now on my channel, of my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I just did a DeBranca one, JT Miller, and today I'm going to be putting out New Jersey's second overall pick and where it may go this year. So, to be uh, I'm about to start 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 awesome sauce, man. Yeah. yeah. The, those cool videos beans. I love watching. I, I, Pirlo's, I always love watching all of Pirlo, but the, the videos I always like watching the most from most people, and it applies to Steve, is the analysis, because everybody has different analysis watching the same thing, of guys pre-draft, and then comparing it to what I think, comparing it to what you think, comparing it to what Russ thinks, comparing it to what Elliot thinks. I oh. uh, like all those different things. Uh, so awesome, Elliot man. being Elliot Freeman for uh, the right. so the I think Constantino, what do they think? Like, so I think, um, that's always the most fun thing. Um, cool, man. And I'm gonna be starting, I'm doing it backwards, so I'm gonna work my way up from the final pick of the first round and say who I think they might pick there and then go up because everybody does it the other way. So I figured it would be cool to do it. Oh yeah. There you go. Do cool. like three picks in one thing. So like, cool. you know, I do it in blocks of three basically. And where can we find you? Where we can, where can we get you? Uh, you can find me at sports fanatic news with a P JJ Borick 26 on Twitter. If you want to find me on Instagram, it's Borg6789. I'm in the process of recycling my Instagram and keeping shit up. I want to have up and, archiving other crap that i don't care about uh so but yeah you can find me there sweet deal all right man thanks guys this is awesome uh i am steel flyers you can find me on twitter at steel flyers 52 so doing a bunch of stuff for a whole bunch of other things so thanks guys for watching and checking us out man yeah thanks for hopping on everybody enjoy the hockey <laughs>